Hello, my fourth grade scientists. This is Scientist Sandoval. I am back with my scientist friends, Buddy, Sunny, and Jack. We are in, still in chapter one. We're at lesson four. We're going to do activities one, two, and four today. Um, we are in fourth grade waves, energy, and information. You are going to need something to write with and something to write on. We have been investigating how sound travels, um, especially as a sound wave. We learned yesterday about um, a tsunami. So we know that a wave pattern of a, of a tsunami is up and down. We also know the source or where it begins is an earthquake. So now we understand what starts a wave and the patterns of motion that can occur in waves. Today we're going to um, investigate what moves in a wave. So I'm going to read page 13 of our tsunami book called What Moves in a Tsunami. An earthquake near Alaska can cause a tsunami that devastates Hawaii about 4,600 kilometers, almost 3,000 miles away. However, that doesn't mean that water from Alaska travels all the way to Hawaii. The water itself is hardly even moving in a tsunami. If it was, imagine all of the ocean animals living in the water near Alaska that would get swept across the ocean and land on the beach in Hawaii. It's not the water that travels across the ocean in a tsunami. All that travels is the energy of the wave. When the earthquake in Alaska makes the seafloor move, the moving seafloor disturbs the water on top of it. Then that water disturbs the water close to it. The water close to it disturbs water a little farther along. And so on and so forth for thousands of miles. The up and down movement travels like a relay race across the ocean. All ocean waves behave like this. It's the energy of the wave that travels, not the water. How to detect tsunamis. There's no way to stop a tsunami. However, tsunamis are only dangerous to people on the coast in the path of the wave. With enough warning time, people can get to safety before a tsunami hits. Scientists have figured out how to detect tsunamis while the waves are still out in the open ocean, before they reach the shore and become dangerous. To detect tsunamis out in the ocean, scientists have placed sensors on the ocean floor in areas all over the world. These sensors are called tsunometers, and they detect changes in the level of the water above them. So, in the text, the text stated, all that travels is the energy of the wave. So, what could that mean? We're trying to figure it out exactly, like, what do you think energy is? So, energy is the ability to make things move or change. So, the ability to make things move or change. Visualize. That means take a mental picture of the energy traveling through the ocean in the open diagram. So on the bottom towards the left you see open ocean, you see an earthquake, and then you see so the earthquake disturbs the seafloor and then that causes the up and down motion so it jolts it up and then the, uh, the energy is dispersed through the water. So like I said before, there is no way for us to see a tsunami wave inside of our classrooms or your homes for that matter right like I live in Colorado I have no water around me but can you think of a wave that you can see that we could maybe investigate at home what do you think we can do what if we made a wave with your family so right now tell your mom and dad whoever's in your house that you need to make a wave with them so you're all going to get in a circle and you're all going to hold hands and then you need to have one person that's going to be the source so they're going to start the wave. It's kind of like when you're at um, a ball game, like a baseball game or a, a softball game or a football game and someone starts the wave. This is the exact same thing, only we're going to be in a circle. 
So here are the two questions we're gonna think about as your family you should be making the wave right now. What is the pattern of motion in your demonstration? And how did your arms move? So what's the pattern of motion? How are you guys, what pattern, how is the wave moving? Well, if you said it's moving up and down, you're correct. And your arms, see those arms of the people in my little illustration there, or your family, you can look at your own arms. Your arms should be going up and down. So who was the source in your wave, and what traveled um, around the circle? So the person who started the wave in your family should be the source, and you can take turns and have different people be the sources of the wave. And then the thing that traveled around your arms did never change place, right? They stayed in their same spots. Your arms just moved up and down. What traveled around the circle was energy. So here are two things so far we know about tsunami waves. We know that um, energy moves away from the source, and we know that water itself moves only a little. So remember, as marine scientists, we've been asked to study sound and how sound travels from mother dolphin to her calf. Based on our investigation of waves, we have found out that energy is what travels in a wave and whatever the wave is traveling through. So in this case, we've been studying tsunami waves. Um, the water only moves a little bit. It's the energy that's moving away from the source. So, we are going to be um, figuring out how sound travels. Again, we're trying to figure out the big question. The question is, how does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf across the distance? Um, we're going to do a model um, right now about sound waves. So, we can't see sound. We're going to use a model called a sound wave sim to investigate when sound travels and see what happens. If you have your investigation notebooks, you're gonna be on page 14 If in your book. If you don't have your investigation notebook, it's not a big deal. I need you to open the notebook that you've been using for science and you're gonna write down these four questions. So you'll pause the video and write down these four questions. Number one, where did the sound come from? What pattern did you see? What do you think was traveling? And what happened to the moving dots? So here is where I need you to stop this video, video one, um, and I need you to go to video two. In video two, we're gonna go ahead and do the sim together, and there's um, music and there's sound in it, and so I wanna make sure just to stop this video, go to video two, complete the sim together. Once you're done with video two, you can come right back to this um, video, video one, and finish the lesson. Again, if you don't complete the sim video, if you don't watch that, you're not gonna understand what's happening in the rest of the lesson, and it's really important that you do that, so I need you to stop the video, go to video two, and then when you're done, you can come back to this video, video one. Okay, so again, if you did not watch the sim video, to stop the video, go to the sim video, which is video two, and do that so we can go on. But I'm assuming that you've done what you need to because you're a scientist and you need to have all the information so that you can have your answers to the questions that we're asking. So I need you to take a few moments to look at this image and think about it. What do you notice about the image? So on the side, in the middle, it looks to be like a violin. And then there's circle motions that are happening on the outside. And there's one little piece of it that's really blown up. Um, and it looks like there's dots in there. And then there's a person. So what do you notice about the image? So I think that in the middle, like we said, there's the violin. I think the violin is playing. And the sound waves are moving away from the source, which is the violin. And it's moving in a circular motion. That's what those circles are in this picture. But 
obviously we really can't see sound and so I think they took a little picture of what the sound would be and they're showing the dots how they're moving and the sound looks to be traveling away from the source traveling to the listener so which way we see we have two waves there so which way is the energy traveling in each of these waves? Again, we've said that it's the, not the wave that's traveling, it's the energy traveling through the waves. So which way is the energy traveling um, in each of these waves? Is it going toward the source, which is what scientist Sunny thinks? Then scientist Buddy is thinking, oh, I think it goes away from the source. Which scientist do you think is correct? Let's drum roll. Scientist Buddy is correct. It is traveling away from the source. So you know the source is the hand, and in the first one it's the slinky toy. So the the, end of the, um, the motion is back and forth, and so it is the it is traveling. The energy is traveling away from the hand. There are many kinds of energy. We know in in the first unit you did in fourth grade it was um, energy conversions. You learned about electrical energy, sound energy, light energy, motion energy, there was nuclear energy, there was chemical energy, there were so kind of many kinds of energies, we know that. But what kind of energy do you think travels in sound waves? Scientist Buddy thinks it's light energy. Scientist Sunny thinks it's motion energy. Scientist Jack thinks that sound energy is going. So, which scientist is correct? Again, um, the question is, what kind of energy do you think travels in sound waves? Ready? Scientist Jack is correct. So, what's traveling through sound waves is sound energy. So, think back to the sound um, wave in the sim that you just did and visualize what you saw in the sim. Think about what you saw there. So, which wave model is more like a sound wave? Is it the rope wave or is it the spring toy wave? Which one it is? So, we saw in the sim, um, the sim was moving and we saw the little dots moving here because of the sound. So, do you think the uh, wave model um, is the rope wave more like a sound wave or is it a spring toy? Here we go. Scientist Sunny is correct. It's more like a spring toy because it goes up, um, it goes back and forth the pattern like the spring toy did. So those little dots, the sound, look like the spring. So remember that we're investigating this question. How does sound get from one place to another? So, we have discovered that sound travels as a wave away from the source. We have also investigated the characteristics of what makes a wave a wave through a reading. We read patterns in communication. We read warning tsunami. We also did the wave demonstration. You know how you did the wave with your family. And you just, you just finished the sound wave sim. So, how does sound get from one place to another? So we know that sound travels as a wave, and the thing it travels through only moves a little bit. It's the energy that's traveling. So in the very next lesson, we're going to share our findings with the park superintendent so we know we can answer a few questions. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Scientist Rachel, and my scientist friends, Sunny Buddy and Jack, and we will see you tomorrow.